It's October 27th, 2022. I wanted to have a timestamp on this so that we could look back at any point in time in the future and just kind of see what the markets were doing and what I was watching and that sort of thing. Um, it is late AM. It's late morning here in the United States as I record this. Uh, and let's just get in. Uh, this is me, research nerd, sharing some of my thoughts, observations, and kind of what I'm watching right now with the market overall. Uh, and maybe we'll even get into uh, sort of Neo a little later in the video. I'll try to do this video with chapters so that it's cleaner and easier for people to jump through if there's something that they want to um, specifically hone in on or go to. Uh, that's also good for me as I still am learning this content creation thing. But let me make that the big screen spy holdings spy is kind of the indicator uh, of the market for me overall i want to see what the market's doing and and so it's a it's a simple sort of overview the safest or the best uh s p 500 uh in the etf that is the spy um and, and here's kind of what we've got right now this is sort of the waiting schedule and so at the top and what's interesting i i do want to show meta because meta just had a big drop that the uh, company formerly known as Facebook, for those who aren't sure uh, or aren't familiar with it, that one was, it did have a higher weighting and I don't know how much higher it was, but it obviously dropped uh, with a huge sell-off. I think it went from $130 for the stock price down to a hundred after their earnings. Um, and the earnings is what I want to talk about because in, a, in con concept is the overview. And that's what I want to talk about. Not just meta or Facebook, whatever. Um, Meta, Tesla, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and Apple. All right. I just want to show the spy uh, weighting that these all have. And again, Meta had fallen, but it was higher up prior to that major drop that it had in the stock price, right? Which changed its weighting. Apple at the top, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Tesla, Google again. Obviously, these, these companies have considerable, considerable weighting when they're combined together. I'm going to jump ahead to the actual spy chart because what we are waiting for, and tonight, in fact, we will get uh, Apple and Amazon. They haven't done their earnings yet. And so I'm expecting them to probably sell off, uh, sort of like we saw these others, Tesla um, and Google and Meta and microsoft but first i want to look at and again concept is the key the overview i have been distrusting of the stock market overall in 2022 largely because i think everything has been propped up i think there's a lot of over leveraging in the background with the banks the biggest um, institutions in the world and those who are able to over leverage the most based on how the monetary system the banking system operates and so it's just kind of, I'm still watching and waiting to say, okay, when is this thing going to bottom? When is it going to be allowed to sort of drop and then have a more healthy, natural rebound on its own? Is that even going to be allowed to happen? The next two weeks are going to be real uh, fascinating. I'm, I'm really kind of honed in on these couple of weeks. And so the volatility I'm expecting more of, at least into these next two weeks, I've said for months that I have expected a political pump. And I cited midterms, and that is the second week of November. The first week of November, we've got the Fed meeting. And so that sort of all happening here while we we have this spy. Now, this is the spy year to date. And so it was roughly 478-ish in that range. Uh, we've gone all the way down to in the last uh, couple of weeks, 350-ish. And now it looks like, and I want to actually just go to the five-day chart because I want you to see how suspect this looks to me anyway. <laughs> because remember, I was just talking about how these companies that have major weighting in the SPY have all sort of sold off. Everyone that we've seen after earnings has had a sell-off, right? And there are two we're still waiting on. We'll see them tonight. So I'm watching and kind of expecting similar things from Apple and Amazon. And understand that I don't know that it matters what happens in the earnings, I think that's almost sort of an excuse um, because whatever narrative is going to be shaped, and even if it's one data point that's considered or, or skewed and presented as negative, that would be the justification for the sell-off, if that makes sense. But again, the backdrop, as I see it, is uh, things have been propped up. And um, so it's almost like just a, a, 
a recalculation, a resetting of a lot of things. So anyway, this is the five day chart. Obviously, SPY looking incredible over these last five days. I find that highly suspicious, especially if you look at what has happened. Start with Tesla. And was that our drop for Tesla? Uh, from 214 down to under 200. But now look, it's already back up because everybody's super safe and we're super happy. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I got to drop the jokes a little bit because it does. It just seems, um, what am I doing for Microsoft? I can I never think of my, I'm a, yeah, that's what it is. That's what I meant. Okay. Uh, so Microsoft, the ticker, the last, again, five days, and we were at 250, dropped to uh, 230, and have dropped further to under 230. All right. Again, the SPY seems to be doing great in the last five days, even though these companies that have significant weighting as they're having their earnings are being sold off 100 and roughly almost 105 for Google down to 96 back up a little bit and back down further to roughly 90. Well, now it's trading about 93 as I record this. So that's where that one is. Who else is there to check in on? Uh, Amazon, Apple or tonight after all oh, meta. Oh, yikes. It's the company formerly known as Facebook. Um, ouch, it, it was, uh, 120, 130 roughly. And then it went to, wow, 97 and now it's back up, uh, super strong at about a hundred. So, uh, and I joke, I'm oh, look, no financial advice, no, uh, legal advice, no advice of any kind, no medical advice. Uh, none of that. I'm kind of just a research nerd who likes to share a little bit of what I'm seeing and thinking. So what, what am I seeing and thinking here? I'm thinking suspect. I don't trust the spy, um, especially when I look at those companies and what they've been doing. Uh, let's look at, for the heck of it, let's look at Apple. And this is before, again, we're going to have earnings tonight. So we're at 140, interesting. We're at that 145, $146 range as I record this. Let's see what happens after hours and then... Um, by and not just the end of this week i want to see next week what's going on again i'm watching for the fed and what happens with the fed uh the first week of november second week midterms lots of reason for a pump but the spy seemingly has been getting a pump even though these major weighted companies within the spy are selling off let's see amazon also going to be tonight after um oh wow okay it's already been beaten up a little bit 120, 115, it's kind of working its way down. Uh, 112 range. Uh, as I record this, again, let's see what happens. Uh, and not just today, tomorrow, but next week. Let's see where things are next week and into the next couple of weeks with, again, Fed and then um, midterms, which I've been calling for months, some sort of a pump, but at the same time, not trusting this market. Uh, I, I want to move on now to something else let me swap out these screens uh stuck with me on the big screen for a second uh don't worry i'll i'll get you something else here real quick because i want to talk about one of the things that could be happening in the background credit suisse I'm really not even focused on the shares. I'm not even focused on the narrative, which is basically for me, the narrative is what I call whatever the headline and the storyline is. The storyline is constructed by whomever is writing the article and they could have whatever view they want. I'm less concerned about that. I'm looking for data points like this. The embattled lender, right? This is a big bank, Credit Suisse, posted a third quarter net loss of over $4 billion. That's a billion with a B. That's $4 billion, okay? For Billy, we're looking to save Billy. Um, for anybody who catches that reference, that'll be funny. Um, the to be a bank and to post those kinds of losses uh, is incredible and not great. And that's kind of what I'm watching. The overview again for me is sort of like what's happening in the in the background. Credit Suisse, by the way, and Deutsche Bank and um, UBS are all banks that AMC Bigum. Shout out to him. 
Uh, I don't think he knows who I am. That's okay. Uh, he's been doing a bunch of research and sharing some things, very, very interesting stuff. Some of the same things that I've studied and, and found crazy when I, as I was learning about them and studying them myself. Uh, but he cited these three banks, Credit Suisse, Deutsch, and UBS as potentially having these kinds of issues that they may be very over leveraged. Uh, the hard thing for us as consumers, as taxpayers, as citizens to realize and recognize is just how propped up the systems are. And it starts with the banking system and what central bankers do in conjunction with politicians when they're incredibly wasteful. The, the, not just tax dollars and, and no, not just tax dollars, tax dollars come from us. Uh, the, the taxing and the, and the increases with taxing, uh, those are pushed on to taxpayers, right? Put on, passed forward to us as consumers, as citizens, but also inflation gets passed on to us. And inflation largely is, is the excess spending and waste um, in part by politicians and partly because of the unchecked, the truly unchecked um, creation of more fake value and, and yeah, fiat currency, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the, the monetary system doesn't operate the way that we sort of maybe think it does. And that was a, a big eye opener for me, but I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole. I, I just want to touch on that and then say, okay, if the concept is the key and banks over leverage, then is it a shock to see this with credit Suisse taking losses like this now 4 billion plus in a loss in a single quarter is a lot. That's, that's a big loss. Uh, and if AMC Biggums is right, and we have more of this to come from some of these other banks, and maybe not just these three, but others as well. I also now want to bring in and sort of enter NEO into the fray because NEO, of course, is my favorite long-term stock. And on Monday of this week, there was a big sell-off. And I'm talking tens of millions of shares were traded at the opening, like immediately. Um, when the stock market opened here in the US, NEO was selling off and not just NEO, a lot of Chinese things were selling off. And I had talked on my live stream that day about how it's possible uh, that someone who is a big bank who is in trouble may be having to sell um, for whatever reason. You know, Maybe it's a, a margin call, maybe it's just a reallocation of funds, maybe it's for any number of other reasons that we won't have knowledge of. Uh, inside information to, you know, we, we just aren't privy to that stuff. But what I do know is this, I have, uh, I know of two retail investors who both have, you know, at least from what they've told me, roughly a hundred thousand shares of Neo or have had a hundred thousand shares of Neo. Those are the biggest retail investors I know of. And one of them is a trader, meaning he trades actively. So he could certainly have been trading the other uh, bought well, bought cheap, like in the two dollar range, and so he's still positive, even with you know Neo trading way down from where it has in the last year, year and a half. Um, he's still you know looking pretty good on his his uh, investment, and he's looking to hold. So the point being, and the reason I make that uh, and, and want to kind of interject is, 160 some million shares were traded on that Monday of Neo, and. I've said it before, you know, the, the big money that can move the stock price or the market itself in the short term, um, that's what controls and dictates price action. And so when we have, and again, the biggest retail investors that I know of don't have anywhere near millions of shares. And so when we had so many shares traded, tens of millions of shares traded right at the beginning of the day, and then throughout the course of the day, that feels to me like mostly big money trading and and selling a lot of selling pressure and uh and so that for me it's just kind of like all right well i don't have any idea why they're selling and i'm really not caught up in that and you know my focus is not even about that but it does help me to have a sense and sort of track things in the overview of the market and my distrust for the market overall which has been in play all of 2022 and then also recognizing that in the background um, and it's stuff that we really can't access real-time data on uh, and accurately track as retail investors. But the reality is we don't have the big money. The big money is these firms who tend in, the, in these banks who over leverage themselves. And when they get caught or have to reallocate funds or, you know, for whatever reason, they have to sell out of positions and this sort of thing. For all we know, Credit Suisse, uh, Suisse was maybe one of these sellers um, and maybe they were selling all of their Chinese um, companies. I don't know. Uh, and again, you know, we can speculate, but 
it doesn't necessarily do us a lot of good. I'd rather stay in the research mode and and sort of recognize that concept and the overview of things like, okay, why is the SPY seemingly looking good in this last five day period when these heavily weighted companies within the SPY are all individually selling off um, with their earnings, even if they have a good earnings. Um, and again, that's where narrative comes in because the narrative is the story and, it, and it's written by whoever is covering the article. I want to Put one more thing up because to tie in narrative and now again to go to neo and it's hard to it's hard for us to gauge exactly how damaging this kind of thing is but let's just look i'm really curious if we if we look at this uh and and shout out david who retweeted this but you know i saw this and here's what i do a lot of times i i within the research that i'm already doing when i see things like this um and we see China's she says willing to work with us for mutual benefit. Okay. Um, and now what do you think we're going to see when we look in the comments on this and the responses to this? Let's just find out because again, for me, this is a bit of a, um, insight on the narrative and the view that some folks have, and there we go. So define mutual. And so it's, you know, basically, and then me. And so it's, it's all, there's nothing positive with regard to China yet. Are we going to see anything? Yep. No, nothing, nothing positive yet. Still nothing positive. I'm just kind of going through, I'm not going to read all of these. Um, there's a semi-positive one. China actually makes some pretty good wine. That's funny. Um, but again, like there, there's, there's, there's this heavy distrust and, um, nothing positive at all oh that's kind of funny though that one is oh and there we go somebody responded yeah that's what a heavy negative narrative and, and this is exactly um this is exactly what i just sort of sit back and watch yeah i mean you you can't you can't not have some awareness of this and that's enough. So let me make me the uh, normal size screen. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to make me the big screen, but um, but that is that's the kind of thing that I see. And if that's where we are um, with respect to most people, and again, this is a small sample size, but you have to be aware of it to recognize what the current status is for the narrative. And I call it the negative news narrative because that's, it's, it's negativity sells in, in the fear mongering and the, the, they call it FUD fear, uncertainty, and doubt that that's the stuff that seems to get the most clicks, the fastest. And uh, it's just like, even with me, if the stock market is down or Neo's getting beat up and I do a video or go live that day versus a day when things are sort of normal, I get a lot more views uh, just by going on a day where it's negative. And so the, there is absolutely a salesmanship, a selling component to that. And you better believe that media companies know that. They've been doing this a long time. And so in this modern day era where the globalization of technology allows for things to be shared so much faster, so much quicker, and the negative stuff grabs so many more clicks and views, I'm just sort of like, all right, what does this mean for time frame? Does this extend out, you know, things uh, into the long term where maybe I've got to be waiting for the stock price to come back? And I'm talking about Neil. I don't know. I don't know. But my biggest concern remains and has been all year, the broader overview of the market. And not even because it directly relates to Neil, but because it indirectly does in that, let's say Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank and UBS and or other banks, large institutions that have NEO have over leveraged themselves in whatever ways to whatever extent, and they end up having to sell out of positions or reallocate funds and selling things like NEO. That's exactly the kind of thing that causes selling pressure like we've seen of late. And so without being able to say with certainty, oh, this is exactly what's going on, it seems logical considering the fact that even though I know a lot of investors who have NEO who are on the retail side, who believe in the company and the stock long-term, none of them are large enough to make the waves and the movements and to have that sort of selling pressure like what we've seen in this last week. So as I sort of try to, 
and bring this all full circle and just share again, this was like a, a, a dangerous trip into my mind, which, you know, I'm stuck. I have to live here every day. So just be glad you're not stuck in there. Um, cause that's what I do. I just, I see this stuff and I'm studying and researching and constantly just going and occasionally I'll be like, Hey, Aaron, you, you need to stop and you should actually do a video and share a little of this, uh, because it is, it's just, there's so much to study. Never, I can never learn at all. And, and that's one of the reasons I enjoy it is it's such a challenge to keep trying to learn and study and improve. Uh, so what's going to happen? Are we going to see Amazon sell off? Or are we going to see Apple sell off? What, when is the market bottom going to come? Is it going to come separately for Chinese stocks? Uh, then with the overall market, are we going to get, is this spy pump legit? Uh, is it fake? Is it going to break down? Is it going to political pump? Is that still coming? Uh, I have been saying for months that I thought we'd see a political pump. What I had said I didn't know was what everything looks like until then or through then or in conjunction with that. And so it could be a wild ending to the year, um, especially again, concept is the overview with these banks. If they're really in the kind of trouble that they may be having over leveraged um, and concept wise, maybe not to the extent that they were over leveraged in 2008, but certainly along the line that it's just, it's too easy for them to over leverage in the first place. There aren't true checks and balances in place. Um, and, and when you've got central bankers and, and making it okay to print and then also squeezing people, investors or, or in, individuals, uh, including retail investors by, you know, pushing the rates up, like the federal reserve is doing here in the U S um, it's just, it's a recipe for kind of disaster, I think overall. Uh, so I'm just sitting back kind of watching like, wow, is this a slow motion train wreck? I don't know. Uh, I don't know, but I'm just going to keep studying, researching, nerding out and, and sharing some of it. Uh, again, this is something different, but I'll try to do some uh, tabs, break this up, chapters, whatever. Uh, so it will be easier to, to piece through, hopefully, whew, if you got through it all, you're a rock star. Uh, and thanks. Come back and see me again. Shishay, we'll see y'all again real soon.